Anthony Hernandez had a dominant victory over Michelle Pereira over the weekend. He was up huge going into the fifth round, then got the fifth round TKO. He may not move up in the rankings after the win. Some people wanted him to fight out of sign. He was ranked up at number two. Even if he doesn't get that fight, he should get a top 10 fight. Nobody uses his cardio as a weapon quite as good as Anthony Hernandez in the middleweight division. John Jones praises Francis Ngannou's performance over Henan Ferrer. What an amazing job Francis did. Displayed complete MMA. Great kicks, great takedowns. Feels good to see him shine. Congratulations, champ. I see you. We need Francis versus Jones or Francis versus Aspinall. Neither of those fights will happen. Francis will never be back in the UFC. He'll probably take a boxing bout next. Jones will probably retire after his fight with Stipe next month. Aspinall will probably take on Gon, assuming Gon beats Volkov, which he's favored to do. The stoppage in the Nganu Ferreira fight caused some controversy. Yeah. The stoppage? Yeah. Uh, a lot of controversy surrounding this stoppage. Yeah. People calling it Vintage Big Dan. Oh. Which, for those who don't know, yeah. that's not really a compliment when it comes to referee Dan Miragliak. No, it was a late stoppage. Yeah. I think even Nganu looks surprised it wasn't called sooner. Yeah. And I think what this does is it brings up that debate again of fighter safety versus letting fighters fight. And it's tricky because you have to balance protecting the fighters, mm -hmm. but not interfering prematurely. Right. And Miraliata has a history of letting fights go longer. Yeah. Which has both positive and negative consequences. Ngannou's always been known for his ridiculous striking power standing up, but he continues to add new wrinkles to his game. I think what's really fascinating about this is that it's not just the win. Yeah. It's how he's winning. Yeah, we saw glimpses of the wrestling before. Right. Um, but against Renan Ferreira, he actively pursued the takedown. Yeah. And finished the fight on the ground. Wow. Which is a huge shift for a guy who's known for his knockout power. And that's got to be terrifying. Absolutely. For anyone in the heavyweight division yeah. to know that he can dictate where this fight's going to take place. Exactly. And I think this fight really demonstrated a tactical awareness mm. that we just haven't seen from him consistently. Okay. Now the question is, is this a one-off? Or is this more patient, grappling-heavy approach here to stay? The grappling is what allowed Ngannou to beat Cyril Gan when they fought in the UFC. He was down 2 nothing going into the third round, and he won 3, 4, and 5 on the ground. Jake Hadley not happy with his scorecards in the Cameron Smotherman fight. He lost that fight. It was surprising he didn't go for takedowns because he was losing in the strike. And maybe that's the problem. He thought he was winning, but all the judges see him as losing. So he continues to strike thinking he's winning, but he's losing on all the scorecards. And then when it goes to the scorecards and he loses, he's surprised and is upset with the decision. Smotherman took this fight on just a few days notice. With her PFL championship victory, Chris Cyborg continues to be the most decorated female fighter in the history of the sport. PFL champ, Bellator champ, UFC champ, Invicta FC champ, and Strikeforce champ. Incredible longevity and amount of gold she has won in MMA. Rod Tang versus Smith on the November 8th One Championship card. Rod Tang's record has 325 fights, 272 wins, 43 losses, and 10 draws. Incredible looking record there for Rod Tang. Smile if you ducked the number one contender in the division with a picture of John Jones and Marab Davalashvili smiling. That set off Marab's teammate Aljamain Sterling. You guys are exhausting, constantly repeating stuff that makes no sense. He just won the belt. Marab's Christian, not Muslim. Making one man's religious beliefs the cause of ducking is baffling. How does that Marab's fault? Make it make sense. That's right. You can't. We got a factor in the context. Umar Nurmagomedov is on an 18-fight win streak coming off a dominant performance against Corey Sanhagen. Who was ranked number two at the time, right? Exactly. So everyone's kind of looking at Umar like he's next in line for a title shot. Which makes Marab's March timeline very interesting. Interesting might be an understatement. Mm. Some fans are seeing it as a calculated move to sidestep Umar. At least for now. Exactly. And this is where it gets even juicier. March just happens to be when Umar observes Ramadan. Meaning he wouldn't be training or fighting during that time? It's a point of contention for sure. Oh yeah, big time. Rob is saying he wants some time to enjoy the belt, which is fair. Sure. But the timing is definitely raising eyebrows. To say the least, you've got people saying he's flat out ducking Umar. And it goes beyond just fight strategy too. 
you've got fans debating whether religious observance is a valid reason to postpone a title fight. And to make things even more complicated, Rob throws out another curveball. He starts pushing for a rematch with Sean O'Malley. So why go for a rematch that you're almost guaranteed to win? Especially when you've got a top contender like Umar waiting in the wings. Well, there are a few ways to look at it. From a strategic standpoint, it could be a way for Marab to secure an easy win and a nice payday. While he waits for Umar. Exactly. And let's not forget O'Malley is a fan favorite. Huge following. A Marab O'Malley rematch would be a massive event for the UFC. Big money fight for sure. Exactly. So it's low risk, high reward for Marab, at least on paper. But doesn't that just play into those ducking accusations even more? It definitely adds fuel to the fire. So in the meantime, Umar was expected to take on Song Yedong December 14th in Tampa, but now there's some speculation that could be moved to January. But they gotta find something for that Tampa main event. Ian Gary is now saying Usman turned him down fighting on that card. He tells Usman, I thought you were built different, but turns out you and Colby are more similar than I thought. Say yes, see you December 14th. So he's saying that both Usman and Colby ducked him for that Tampa card. I was offered a fight with Colby Covington. It took me all of 20 seconds to respond to the email saying, yes, I'm in. A month later, we've still got no response from Kobe. He's avoiding me like the plague. And there's one reason, and one reason only this fight isn't happening. And his name's Kobe Covington. Strickland confirms he is fighting DDP next. Originally, he thought January in LA, but the location and date are not confirmed yet. Rob Font picked up a decision victory of the weekend over Kyler Phillips as an underdog and by doing so he moved into 5th spot for the most wins in UFC bantamweight history with 11. Only active guys on this list are Rob Font, Marlon Vera and Aljamain Sterling but Aljamain Sterling is fighting at featherweight now so he's looking to get a win in the featherweight division against Movsar Evloev, UFC 310 December 7th in Vegas. Elkins and Pineda won fight of the night over the weekend, Pineda retired after the fight, great 17 year career, 100% finishing rate, a great finisher, 28 victories, all 28 finishes. For a good career, not just a big You got a drink? You got a drink? Shit, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa. The DG. Hey. Hey. Happy retirement, coach. That legend, bro. Let's go, baby. That's the legend status. Oh, hell no. I got a drink. I got a drink. Fuck that. Maybe it's going to try and Wow. Maybe it's going to try and Wow. Wow. Oh, 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 my God. No. What the hell? Oh my God! What? Wow! Oh my God! He has him. He's holding him, guys. This 